the Vet Nation podcast, where we strive to awaken the warrior within. Mike Foss, thank you so much for joining us today. We are absolutely looking forward to today's episode and learning more about the Warrior Bonfire program. So before we get into what the program is offering, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your military background. Well, um, first of all, it's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, I've got a very strange military background. Um, I enlisted in the Army Reserves right out of college. And about a year later, I went to officer candidate school. Um, so I went through all the classes, you know, officer candidate school, my basic course, all those kind of things, ranger school, airborne school, all that stuff. I was a combat engineer. Um, you know, second, got, did my platoon later time, my XO time, and got promoted to captain. And uh, at that time, I newly married. And um, like most guys that do it, they'll say, um, I made a stupid decision and got out of the army. Um, and then the job I had, I got, I worked for about a year, and I, then I got promoted and moved to Southern California. And I said, no, I want to join the Guard or the Reserves, do something, you know, I still want to be involved. Mm -hmm. And and in the, and I don't know if you know this, or, or but, but as an officer in the Guard and the Reserves, you kind of got to go find a job. You can't just go to a recruiter and say, hey, I want to join the unit. So... What I did, because you know, I'm in I'm in Southern California. There's 20 million people around me. I have I can barely figure out the way to drive home from work, and and so I just stopped at an Army uh, National Guard recruiting station and enlisted in the National Guard. So I went from being a captain to a Sergeant E5, and wow. so as a, as an engineer, um, and then you know was a squad leader, became a a, a platoon sergeant. And then the California National Guard, in their infinite wisdom, found out that they were short captains. And I had been one, so they made me a captain again. Um, and so I was a captain, worked at the division headquarters, was the commanding general's aide during the LA riots. Um, oh, wow. Then uh, we started having kids and we decided, you know, Southern California isn't really where we want to raise our children. Um, so we moved back, to, you know, we wanted to be by family. Um, so we moved back to Denver, where my wife is from, and, um, you know, I got a reserve job um, and uh, was promoted to major, became a battalion XO, all engineer stuff. And then 9-11 hit, and I volunteered to go on active duty with, with all intentions that I was going to be sent to Afghanistan or Iraq. Mm -hmm. um, and what they did was they put me at... Army Space and Missile Defense Command in the G2 section, in the Intel section. So now all of a sudden I'm a collection manager, Intel collection manager for, you know, a three-star command. You know, <laughs> didn't know what I was doing, didn't know anything about space, but you know, you figure that stuff out. Um, and then I um, uh, got promoted Lieutenant Colonel, got a battalion command, and uh, they sent us sent me down to Fort Bliss, Texas, um, and, and, and commanding an infantry training battalion. So now I'm still not doing engineer stuff. Um, and then I became a deputy commander of a armored brigade, still not doing engineer stuff. And uh, then I spent my last year back at uh, working for the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency at NORAD NORTHCOM at Peterson Air Force Base. And then I retired. How's that? <laughs> that is a very interesting, interesting career. So from officer to enlisted to officer, multiple hats. What I, what I love is when, you know, with the whole purpose behind Vet Nation and awakening the warrior within, we, we look to strive of, you found that. You found that warrior within while you were serving you got out. And, and I love that you said, you know, making that, that stupid decision um, because many, many of us that leave early, we do regret it. And, and we yep. see that across the board. I have yet to meet someone who said I made the right decision when I chose to get out early. I, I love the story of resiliency there is that 
there through all those years so many emotions so many switching roles in the hat so quickly in your your resiliency and your adaptability to be true to service is what i heard from your story well, and, and that's you. that's impactful you, you know mike you, you know the reason why we want to share these stories and we want to continue to build that fire and, and to awaken the warrior is so that others can see and they can hear and they can see that no matter what we're choosing we're striving to serve so with your incredible story wearing multiple hats and, and i love that again about the military community you know how do you write a resume how do you write a resume and tailor it to all those hats that you wore well and and and, I, and i'll go I, I, I won't answer that question necessarily about a resume but you know, you hear a lot about people that get off active duty, um, retirees or just ETS and, and, you know, have a hard time finding themselves. You know, and when I got out, it was 2010, um, you know, I was 49 years old and um, I actually got, had one, two, three, four, five jobs in those first five years out until I actually, had, until I had the opportunity, I'd been involved with Warrior Bonfire, but until I had the opportunity to, to you know, actually run the organization, um, you know, I, I was kind of, you know, I, I didn't act like I was lost. I didn't feel lost, but I was lost at least career-wise. Um, but now I've got a role where I'm back, giving back to soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. And, and, and that you found your sense of purpose. You know, oftentimes I, I hear veterans share that they're lost just like you did and we don't know what we wanna do. And I, I think that goes back to in the military, we do wear so many hats and overnight we change roles and we are adaptable and we are resilient. And so to pigeonhole us or for us to pigeonhole ourselves is almost, it's almost, it, it's caging the bird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. And it's probably more us p pigeonholing ourselves, even though we don't realize it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with that, you've now found your home and, and you're content and you're loving what you do. Tell yep. us about tell us about the Warrior Bonfire program. Well, I got to to tell you about the Warrior Bonfire program. I got to tell you the story of how we got started. Um, our founder, a guy named Dan Fordyce, who I started my uh, officer career with i had a little bit of enlisted time before and so did he but but uh, you know we've been friends since you know we met in 1983 and have stayed friends ever since um well in 2012 and i can't tell you what time of year it was but dan got this idea that he wanted to take some wounded veterans um, on a hunting trip he's got him and his brother got a nice piece of hunting property with, with a you know a lodge and everything on it in, in Mississippi and, and uh, he decided he wanted to uh, take, take some hunt, take these guys on a deer hunt. They had plenty of deer around there. And so he starts calling up Walter Reed, BAMC, all these military hospitals and every one of them said, who the hell are you, go away. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, he kind of figured out that, hey, if I'm gonna do something like this, I need to start a nonprofit. Right. Well, and then in the meantime, he, he met a guy a sergeant, retired, medically retired sergeant first class, a guy named Greg Williams, uh, who was injured in an RPG attack. And uh, we call him GCC. And, and he told Dan that he said, I could, I, we, we should, we, we will find guys in your own backyard. We don't need to go to Walter Reed. We'll find guys in Mississippi and Louisiana. Um, and and then he told Dan that, you know, I could spend all day with a counselor and not find the value of just hanging around with five or six guys that have been there around a campfire. So Dan's Absolutely. famous quote is, I'll pro we'll provide the bonfire. So what it led to in, in January of, of 2013, Dan and, and GCC found five other guys and, and they took six guys and he took six guys on a hunting trip. And his whole idea was just to show him a good time. That was it. Um, and 
but what he quickly found out is there was a hell of a lot more going on than having a good time. Right. Guys were talking to each other and opening up and helping each other. And, and, and so what the Warrior Bonfire Program does today is we take groups of six, because GCC said five or six, on bon what we call bonfire trips, retreats, whatever you want to call it, bonfires around the country. And the idea is to show them a good time in the great outdoors. Uh, there's healing in the outdoors. It's called recreational therapy. And, um, and anybody, that's, anybody that poo-poos that recreational therapy, what I tell them is, um, have you ever had a crappy day in the office and gone outside and walked around the parking lot and got a breath of fresh air and came back in feeling better? That's recreational therapy. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. I, I was just sharing that with someone just to add on. I was just sharing that exact yeah. sentiment with someone today is doesn't matter how bad your day is, get up and go take a walk or go yeah. hike yeah. or get some sunshine. You know, we're in a global pandemic right now. Get yeah. outside and get some sunshine. Right, right. Exactly. Exactly. And and so This is what, hap that's what happens on a trip is, is we do the recreational therapy. But then, you know, there's a bond amongst veterans and it happens very quickly. There's a bond amongst wounded veterans, combat wounded veterans that happens even more quickly. So that happens. And that opening up and talking to each other um, and helping each other out is what happens on our bonfire retreats. Um, and, it, it, and I want to give you a, a few examples of what, what, how I think f what we're doing to help these guys with post-traumatic stress is, and I, I want to give you, I'll give you two examples that have nothing to do with the Warrior Bonfire Program, but okay. it's clear of how this happens. Um, my son, in, the, in December of 2013, he was a senior in high school. Uh, there was a shooting at his high school. In, in, in Denver, or suburbs of Denver. Um, Kyle was two classrooms away. He heard the Molotov cocktails go off. He heard the gunfire. He knew the girl that was killed. He knew the shooter that ended up committing suicide. And yet to this day, he has never talked to me, my wife, his big brother, or his big sister about his feelings. Who did he talk to? Classmates, teachers, coaches, people that were in the, the building. Fortunately for Kyle, unfortunately for our family, he had a cousin that went through Columbine. So Kyle and Nick have talked to each other. Wow. Um, and then I'll, I'll give you another example. This is a military example. Is, is there a World War II veteran named Philip Cassio? We lost him last November, just four days shy of his 100th birthday. When he was 97, he was being interviewed by the World War II Museum in New Orleans. And he told him his story. And he said that, you know, he'd been in a B-17 bomber that got shot down over the English Channel. They were able to land in the water and get out in a lifeboat. But they were captured and he spent 811 days in a Nazi POW camp. And he told the interviewer throughout his life, he had nightmares. And when the nightmares would come, which is their term for PTSD, when the nightmares would come, he would call up one of his buddies that had been there, talk it through, and the nightmares would go away. Then he tells the interviewer, now those guys are all gone. I got no one to talk to, so I've got the nightmares almost every day. So what I believe the Warrior Bonfire Program is doing is providing those we serve with a larger, larger support network so they have many people to reach out to when their nightmares come. Um, and then what we do is we conclude every one of our uh, bonfire retreats with, guess what, a bonfire. Now, you know, obviously it can, if, if, you know, we do a lot of stuff in Southeast Texas where you're at. Well, down in Southeast Texas, you can have a bonfire because you rarely have fire bands and all that kind of stuff. But out West, you know, we have, we, we, we have a campfire yeah. or protected, you know, fight, dig a hole with, you know, a bunch of dirt right around it, whatever, you know. But anyways, and what we do is we retire a U.S. flag. And the way we do it, however, is, is, is we cut the flag in stripes. Everybody gets a red stripe, 
a white stripe, and a blue stripe. And we retire each one of those stripes in honor of a fallen comrade. And I mean, you can imagine that that's pretty emotional, but it's also pretty healing. Um, and that's what the Warrior Bonfire does. We don't, we don't do, you know, there's not, our bonfire trips are, are, are not all the same. They're not, you know, we don't have counselors on there. It's, 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 we do two formal things. Everybody tell their story in the bonfire. Everything else is recreational therapy and communication amongst them. Wow. So, so I, I absolutely love the concept. So there's, there's no set program and, and, and I like that. So you're just saying, so we, you go out there. So how do you find these locations? Well, it, it, it's, it's, uh, most times, most of them are uh, someone that we either know or one of our board members knows or whatever has a place, okay? We just did a spouse's retreat in, 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 up in the mountains here in Colorado last weekend because we, we serve spouses as well as couples okay. in the Purple House. Um, and, but it's our founders got a ski house up. So he lets us use his house. Um, we just talked to a lady in uh, down near Warren, Texas, in your neck of the woods, and and uh, she hosts a pig hunt for us every year at her ranch. Well, now she's going to host a couples trip, and so a lot of it is just people volunteering up. Um, every once in a while, I've got a trip coming up in a couple weeks in Southern California. And for this time, I had to I had to rent a VRBO house, but typically, okay. typically we go and I've got a buddy out there, and just because of the COVID stuff, we couldn't use the place he he usually sets up for us. But you know, and we get a lot of people, that, you know, just sponsoring us for, you know, a lot of in kind donations. Hey, I can't I, I I can't afford to give you give you this amount of money, but I can sure afford to feed you a meal. So, so different locations, are you seeing, you know, different veterans at each event or different spouses? Is the word getting out? It, it, you know, the, I'll tell you, first of all, we're not a one and done type of thing. Good. If someone okay. needs to get on a bonfire trip, they come on a bonfire trip. We get them on when we can. Um, that being said, um, the vast majority, I'd say about 93% of all uh, the veterans we have served were recommended to us. Or they, were, they were recommended by some we'd already brought on a bonfire. Uh, the other percentage is mostly taken up by spouses looking on the internet trying to find something for their spouse to go, to go do. Um, right. Is it a weekend, a weekend trip? It, they they typically go five to six days, you know, okay. over a weekend uh, or five to seven days, not six, five to seven days. Sometimes it's four, um, but typically five to seven days. Wow. So, so if there's no set, set agenda, the veterans show up, tell me about, so they, they find out about the program, they find the location. Do you guys fly them out? Yes, you it's at all at no cost to them. You know, okay. at no cost to them. And, and, and we have some partners that, that we get a little bit of help on the track piece. Um, when times are, you know, right now for nonprofits, times are tough. Yes. You know? I mean, it's, I'm starting to see it opening up a little bit, but, but you know, times are a little tougher. So we might, have, we, we might look more for just regional guys that can drive. Um, mm -hmm. But the good thing right now is airplane tickets are low, so that helps us too. Yeah, absolutely, they are, they are. So so they come out for these five to seven days. Uh, are the spouse trips that long too? You say couple uh, trips? The one trips. we just did, the, the, the spouse trip we just did, it, it was four days. We, we, we're, tr we're trying to do two spouse trips a year and two couples trips. Um, we have never made it there yet. And that's the goal for 2021. Um, but the spouses in the place in Texas for the couple's trip, that's going to probably be a four-day four, four thing too. Very nice. Very nice. It, it, it's much needed. So 
have you ever found that because you know I, I look at agendas and, and being 15 years military I kind of like to keep that that tight agenda and that script so it, it's that sense of purpose so yeah. how do you find that they're encouraged and motivated day one to get oh, up and act? We give them an itinerary. We give them breakfast is at at zero eight hundred, but 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 when I talk about we don't do, you know, a lot of different things. Most of our time is spent, uh, you know. I'll, I'll tell you what we're doing on this Southern California trip that I got coming up. Yeah. Uh, the first day. Um, we're staying up near Camp Pendleton. The first day, we're going into San Diego. Uh, we're going to tour the Maritime Museum. We're getting a ride through uh, the harbor. It's an hour and a half. I think it's an hour and a half. Ride mm -hmm. on an old Swift Vietnam era Swift boat. Then we're going to tour the USS Midway. Um, and then I, I there's a restaurant I love in San Diego, so we're going to take them there for dinner. What restaurant? Um, it's at the Cosmopolitan Hotel. Okay. It's an it's like the original first hotel in San Diego, and they have this great outdoor patio restaurant that I love. Um, and then the next day we're going to do surfing lessons in the morning, um, and then just hang out at the beach. Then the the lat the, that Sunday we're going to do uh, jet skis in the morning, and then hang out at the beach. Um, so when I say there's not an agenda, yeah, there's a schedule, but but. But, but we don't have an agenda. We're not, right. you know, does that make more sense? That makes absolute sense. So, so it sounds like kind of an all guys trip. What about our women veterans? I say the word guys, um, but we serve w women as well. Okay. Uh, we, we, look, we, we serve Purple Hearts. There's just not as many women with Purple Hearts as there are men with Purple Hearts. Right. But we've served, we, we, you know, we've served women too. So what's the criteria to be able to attend one of these events? Got to have a purple heart. Or, That's it. Okay. Or, you know, we'll take, like, we were talking to somebody this weekend that uh, she, her, she knows of someone, her and her, the purple, her and her purple heart husband know of someone that could really use it. And we know both him and her. And so we'll take a person that comes recommended by somebody we know. That's not very problem. nice. Very nice. Very nice. Because there are there are a lot of there are a lot still of our wounded warriors that have not received their purple hearts. Oh yeah, yeah. And and there's and 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 I'll tell you, as a veteran, okay, um, I'm assuming you don't have a purple heart. I do not. No. Okay, but what we do, what 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 I, what I try to do is is like when I need a helper on a trip somebody else to help me lead the thing and because we don't let the guy we do all the work we do the cooking the driving the cleaning the all that kind of stuff right um and when I need help it, to me it's best to have another veteran that guy might not that person may not have been in combat that guy might not have a purple art whatever but that veteran still gets the same amount out of it that the Purple Hearts are getting. Does that make Ab sense? Absolutely, absolutely, I agree. I've, I've actually supported several different caregiver retreats, uh, Semper Fi Fund retreat, and, and I found that you go in as a volunteer and, and you absolutely leave with getting oh, yeah, yeah, just yeah. as much, just as much out of it. And um, my, my ex-husband was a Purple Heart, and so I, I can attest to, the trials and tribulations of being a, you know, a military spouse and a caregiver. And so I, my heart is there with, with our military spouses and our caregivers to be able to take care of their wounded warriors. And you know, the other really cool thing is we've get, we get a lot of people offering stuff up. I'm just going to give the example of one. Um, a few years back, we do an annual ski trip in Colorado, skiing, snowmobiling, tubing, you know, winter stuff, right? So I get this guy that calls me up. He lives in, he lives, you know, in Grand County where we were gonna go, where we're going. He goes, hey, would you like me, uh, would you like us to take your guys ice fishing? Well, and I grew up in Minnesota. And to me, ice fishing is back in the 60s and 70s 
where we, my dad hauls me and my brother out and we go, go out, drive out on a lake because you could drive out on the ice up there, right? right. Drive out on a lake, we dig a hole and we sit on a bucket and we freeze our butts off of it. Well, it's a little different here. You know, now we've got ski huts. So I said, sure, we'll do it, we'll go out there. And so we have this group of people, all civilians, never served in the military, but they're, they're, they're out setting up ski or ice fishing huts. They're drilling the holes. Shoot, they clean and fillet the fish and cook it right on the lake for us. And, and so, when you, so when you see that community yes. of, of veterans serving veterans and civilians serving veterans, everybody gets something out of it. But mostly the guys that we're serving because and you know it well as I do. When you're in the military, or you, 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 you don't think the veteran, the civilian world gives a crap about you. You don't really, you know. And and you know, it, it's just amazing when you see this stuff come together. And it happens on most every bonfire trip we have. I, I couldn't agree more. It, it's so important to see that sense of community. I, I was speaking with several employers recently of. Why do you even want to bring on our veterans? Why do you want to hire from the military talent pool? And, and they talked about that sense of community. And, and the, then you look at the other side. And if you ask any veteran out there or military spouse or even dependent, Mike, what they miss the most about the military is absolutely that bond, is that sense of community. Right, right. And, 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 if, and what I believe is, and this is changing the subject totally. Yeah. All those things, when I first time I got out of the army, all those things I didn't like about the, the military were the same things I didn't like about the civilian job I got. Yes. You know, but, but <laughs> <laughs> they were. And it, so, but what I missed was that camaraderie. And that's one of the things we're trying to give these guys back. Give, give, give. A absolutely. You know, you, you think again, I, my doctoral research actually speaks to this, is, is the acculturation theory and the social stigmas. And when, when we look at successfully tr striving to, you know, we call it transition, but really it, it's acculturation. We're going into a dominant culture and the civilian culture is more dominant because the veteran population is less than 10%. And yeah. so we can expect the military culture dominant while we serve, but yet still respectful and adhering to policies and procedures as we travel the globe. And, and I think, again, it's, that's what binds us. And you realize in the civilian culture, it's so, it's large, it's vast, it's the globe. And, and how do you connect and engage and have that sense of community? So I absolutely love what the Warrior Bonfire program is doing, Mike. It, it's, it's incredible to hear that there are so many different organizations out there that are striving to bring awareness to that sense of community. And they're, they're all unique in their own right. So um, those looking to volunteer, I, I think that's incredible. Uh, I would like to ask you this question as, as we look to end is, when you think about that catchphrase of awaken the warrior within, awaken the warrior within, what does the Warrior Bonfire program at the very end, what do you see with our warriors? What do you see with our nation's heroes on that last day as, as they say goodbye? Well, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example instead of, of, of what I see. And I see this a lot. We had a guy, um, a double arm amputee on, on a bonfire trip a few years ago up in the mountains here, a winter trip. And this guy, Eric, is his name. In the f beginning of the trip, I mean, you could hardly get him to say two words to anybody. And then at the dinner, the last night, before we went down to have the bonfire, you couldn't shut him up. And, 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 and so when you say, awaken the, bon awaken the warrior, what we saw at the end is who he really is. Absolutely. Right? At the beginning, that wasn't who he really is. Um, and that doesn't mean, you know, I might not be one of those li big life of the party kind of guys, but, but we see that in a lot of guys. They become yes. 
they're coming back to who they really are. And, 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 that, and that, that's a good thing. Because if they're coming back to who they really are, to me, that's a huge step in their lifelong journey of healing. Because, you know, you have a wound, a physical wound, and it's bad, okay? You, you know, how many, how many amputees have we seen that, that, you know, they're doing things better than they did before they lost their leg, you know? I, or, yes. or, or those guys with in, internal injuries. You know, and that's the mass, vast majority of them. We don't see, we can't, they're not visible. But they get through that. They learn how to deal with it. It's the stuff up here that's going, through, that's, that, that's the lifelong journey. It's not the stuff in your arm or your back or whatever. I mean, that's just pain. Right. I, I absolutely agree. And, and it's, it's a lifelong journey. And yeah. I, I think that's the most important message is that no matter, no matter the wounds, physical, invisible, it's, we're all, and I, I think, especially due to this pandemic, what makes the civilian community now they're able to relate is the fact of, wow, I felt like every day was Groundhog Day. I felt trapped. I felt, you know, they're having all these feelings and these, cause, these ang the angst, right? The, the anxiety and the, and it, every single day, I would think, because the military is, is so, it's, we're so fast paced, like you said at the beginning, you wore many hats, Mike, in your military career. And, and we're constantly moving forward. And then it's almost that push pause button in the civilian sector. And how do you ensure that you're moving forward? How do you ensure progress? And, and it absolutely starts with a lifelong learning mentality and making sure that every single day we're striving to awaken that warrior within. How yep. can we continue to serve the community around us? How can we continue our servant leadership? So for those looking to find you, how can they find more information out about the Warrior Bonfire Program? Um, our website is warriorbonfireprogram.org. Okay. Uh, that's probably the best place. Um, and there's contact information for every, you know, regular website with everything on. Follow us on Facebook at Warrior Bonfire. Um, I don't do anything with the Instagram or Twitter, so I couldn't tell you off the top okay. of my head. <laughs> Just do, no, look at Warrior yeah. Bonfire. It's got to be something like that. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. No, that's, that's absolutely great. And, and I appreciate you taking the time today, Mike, and, and sharing this great resource it is needed, it is impactful, and you are right, there is nothing better than getting out and getting some sunshine and, and having that, that therapy. So thank you for sharing today and, and God bless you and Warrior Bonfire Program on your journey. Well, thank you and thank you for all you do. Uh, it's been my pleasure to, I always love telling our story, so this was, this, this was easy. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the intent is we want to get our stories out there and be able to share. None of us can reach every single person. So nope. we are, we are stronger together. Thank you much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.